Hello, brothers and sisters. Welcome to this Grace for Today. Talk. The, today's topic is going to be about rest and what we have in Christ. So I'm going to let Brother Dark talk first and speak on it. Hey, uh, so when it comes to rest, uh, we got to understand that there's nothing we can do in our own strength. There's nothing we could do that's satisfying to the Lord. Only his own payment was satisfying. It, what he died, he died on a cross for our sins. Let's go over the gospel real quick. How is one saved? They simply put their trust in the fact that Christ died on a cross for their sins, was buried and rose for their justification. Now, how, how do we live the Christian life? It's the same as we got saved. We put our trust in Christ. It's that simple. Um, Christ. He is our holiness. He is our sanctification. And us knowing these things, these spiritual truths, we're able to rest in the fact that Christ did it all. And he did much more than that because we know what we have as children and heirs. Um, so so how, how do we live the Christian life? Well, it's simple. It says the just shall live by faith. That's what the Bible says. The just shall live by faith. We put our faith in Christ for all things. And we don't worry about stuff. Even though our old man worries constantly, that's normal. That's a spirit in us. Again, unto bondage and fear. But our new man doesn't possess that spirit. Our new man is of Christ. And we don't, we don't see how the Lord works in our lives, but we know He is handling all things. And we know that an ounce of worry does not add a cubit to our stature. So why worry in life about anything? It's just a rational fear from our old man, the natural man. The natural man worries, the natural man fears. But it does not add anything to us worrying or having fear. But us, what can we do? Since nothing we do is pleasing and all of our righteousnesses are as filthy rags before God. Well, it's simple. We just trust in Christ. For he's the only one who could do anything. God gives increase. For, for I planted, Apollos watered, but God gave the increase. We can't add anything to ourselves. Certainly not by worrying. And think of, think of this, the, the sparrows of the air. They neither soil, uh, sow nor reap. But they always have what they need. They always have full bellies. Because God, God maintains them. Do birds worry about what they're going to eat? So why should we give thought about what we're going to wear? What we're gonna, how we're going to live our lives? When Christ takes all of our worry. And he shows us that all we need is him. And he... He says, my grace is sufficient for thee. So he suffices, but we don't realize that. And the natural man cannot realize that. But us who are of the new creation in spirit, we can realize these things because we partake of the living water, that being Christ. And Christ shows us that, yes, I am sufficient for thee. While the natural man constantly fears and worries, we look to Christ and we know we have peace in this time of fear, in this time of worry, because we cannot do anything on our own. We need Christ. And he, he says, I am the vine and you are the branches. Without me, you can do nothing. So he is our source and he handles everything, no matter what it is, whatever is afflicting you, the worries of life, because we all have them, if we're honest. But Christ is handling all that. We don't see how he's handling it, but we know that he is. And if he could take care of the lilies of the field, surely he could take care. Uh, are we no greater than they? Surely he could take care of his children to a much greater extent, us being his children. And that's something you need to come to realize, that you, you are a child of God because you placed your faith in Christ alone. He will take greater care of you. Are, are you not? 
You are redeemed to God. You have everything in Christ. You are a priority to God, no matter how that looks, how your life looks. Things don't go your way. People hate you. Whatever this world is telling you to believe, whatever they believe about you, it doesn't matter because we have rest, because we have Christ. And we look to Christ for that rest, and he shepherds us into that rest. See, we can't even rest on our own. He needs to shepherd us into that rest. So all things can be done by Christ. And how do we do that? By what we're doing right now. We're looking to Christ because he's the only answer. And he's the only one who gives answers. And without him, we can do nothing. Because we are the branches and he is the vine. And it's effortless. There's no effort on our part to do anything. But it's all complete. And it's all by trust. We trust in the Lord. So, I'm, I gotta say, I'm grateful for this fellowship. I'm grateful for all my friends and brothers in Christ and sisters in Christ. I'm grateful for all of it. And I worry. I worry about things. I worry about people's opinions of me. I worry about things. But that's all the old man. That's all the old creation. And soon enough, the former things of this world will be wiped away and will be no more. So, there's, like like I said, there's really no to worry about anything because Christ is handling everything. We just don't see it. So that's the main point that I wanted to address. Um, yeah, do you guys have anything to add on to that message? Uh, amen. Uh, just basically kind of adding on what the dark said. Jesus Christ is the rest. What it says in Hebrews, there is a rest for the children of God. And that's available every single day. That rest for the believer is a seizing from our works. Seizing from the things we do to whether that be um, trying to get peace from God by reading our Bible. There's nothing wrong with reading the Bible. But what I'm saying, you're trying to buy rest, peace, a knowledge and understanding by your own efforts. But we know that Christ has completed the work before the foundation of the world. And he's saying rest, cease from all of your own works. Because how we have peace is through the blood of Jesus Christ. That's Romans 5. We have, Jesus, we have peace through our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ with God. We have peace with God now and always. You can't get that through going to church, being baptized. You have it through the perfect sacrifice of Christ for and for the believer is always available and it's always there and it's what um dark also said it's christ shepherding us into that rest because depending on where we're at in our lives maybe we're going through spiritual warfare persecution people just um people you live around with the religious, and you can't deal with it. It's too overbearing. And your mind is all caught up in the thoughts of what they might think, the thoughts of what might happen if you disagree with them. But no, that doesn't matter. And Christ will bring you to that understanding and realization that I have no power over this situation. I'm going to throw it in the Lord's hands. What Peter says, put your burden on Christ for he careth for you. He cares for you. And he wants to take your burden on his shoulders. He's taking care of all of it. And he is faithful and willing to not go back on his word. I've seen it many times in my life. I've seen it happen in other believers' life. It's a miracle every time it does happen that we actually do get to experience that rest in, in the daily sense. Because it is not in our power. It, the only power we have is just saying amen to what the word says t to us through Christ. Because we have the spirit giving witness to the testimony of Christ. God's record concerning his son. That he died on the cross for our sins. Was buried and rose again the third day according to the scriptures. And that remains true. Because we, have, we are born of the incorruptible seed which lives and abides forever by the word of God, by the word, by the word of the gospel, which was preached unto us. 
The gospel is how we were born of that incorruptible seed, which cannot be taken away from us. Because greater is he that lives inside of you than he, than he that is in the world. And I have a verse um, in Colossians. Colossians chapter 1, verse 21. And you, that were sometime alienated and enemies in your mind by wicked works, yet now hath he reconciled in the body of his flesh through death to present you holy and unblameable and unreprovable in his sight. Christ is the one through his fle- in the body of his flesh through death to present us holy and unblameable and unreprovable in his sight has nothing to do with us. This is what Christ has done for the new creation. When we are glorified and how God sees us, we're holy and unblameable and unreprovable. Christ is our sanctification. We're separated and we are holy only by the blood of his cross. And that remains true forever because our condition can't change our position. The things that are true to our spirit and the, the Holy Spirit that we are sealed by unto the day of redemption. It gives peace in knowing that this is true for you and th- it was freely given unto you. You didn't have to work for it. It was freely given as a gift. And another verse. Psalm 103, chapter 103, verse 12. As far as the east is from the west... So far hath he removed our transgressions from us. Meditate on that. That is how separated our sins are from us now because we are justified through Christ. The moment we believe the gospel, he removed our sins as far as the east is from the west. God is not looking towards our sin. He's looking to us God the Father is looking towards us as if we were Christ himself. Try to meditate on that. And we already have a decent understanding of how much God the Father loves Christ. Now try to meditate on the fact that that's how much God the Father loves you. And how much, of course, Jesus Christ loves us. We're sweet smelly Savior of Christ unto those that are being saved unto life. And those that are um, sweet sm- um yeah, just about that. I'm not going to say the other part. But yeah, we're s- sweet sm- smelling savor of Christ. Christ is the burnt offering that God the Father draws near to. That's what the burnt offering represented in the Old Testament. And it shows the fact that not only does he love us and care for us, but he's pleased with us. It shows another aspect of our relationship in the spirit of sonship. Spirit, but we have we have received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, "Abba, Father." The Spirit witnessing with our spirit that we are children of God, and then children, then heirs, heirs of God, and co-heirs with Jesus Christ. The more familiar we get to the fact that we can draw near unto God with the blood, which is our just us having faith that these things are true to us. We can have fellowship with God because fel- we always have that fellowship available to um, with him. Knowing we can go to his throne of grace for mercy, help type of need. When we're going through our situations, you say, you know what? I have the blood and I know God accepts the blood and I know I'm his son. And when I come to him, he's not trying to find a reason to rebuke me of sin. He's not worried about our sin. He removed that from us. He just wants us to go to him so he can take care of it. That's our position in the Christian life. This is where the rest is. He provides the rest and he provides the solution. Us putting putting our situation, our real life situation, the things we're worried about in the future. Let's say you you don't have a job. You don't, your car broke down. Your family situation is not looking good. Your financial situation is not looking good. Put that in the Lord's hands. Jehovah Jireh, the Lord is your provider. He will and is faithful to take care of your situations. And again and again, he is faithful. I have one more um, set of verses I'd like to show to you. Just what the 
the reality of what we have. Christ in us is that the spirit of sonship is our reality today and forever. And so in John chapter 14, verse 3 through 4, And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may also be. And whither I go, ye know, and the way ye know. That's Christ praying a prayer of after he would be glorified, that where he would be, we are with him. And that's speaking of his spirit. We already know in Ephesians that we're seated in the heavenly places with Christ. That's true now. You're seated in the heavenlies. So that's, that's true. But what also do we have that's true? In specific of his, where he is at, literally, we are at. Colossians chapter 1 verse 27. To whom God would make known what is the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. Christ lives inside of us. He fulfilled that. I will repeat, I will come and again receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be also. And whither I go, ye know, in the way ye know. That's true right now. Because Christ is that spirit, which is the eternal life. Jesus, eternal life is in an object, living forever. That's also true. But Jesus Christ is the eternal life who is the fellowship with the Father and the Son. They, having that fellowship is what we have through the Spirit, being able to fellowship with the Father and Christ. And when we read the Word with, through the New Testament ministry, Paul's epistles, Peter, Jude, we read the verses that are speaking on our riches of the inheritance, and we, we agree with it. That's God speaking. God speaking is in heaven, and God the Father's speaking is through his Son. We're no longer hearing God speak through the law and prophets. We're speaking, we're hearing God speak through his Son, and we have that speaking through the Spirit. And that's not hearing an auditory, the Lord hath said, like a Old Testament view of like, God, I heard God auditorily speak. No, God speaking is the witness that says, this is true to you. And then our mind is like, wait, I do agree with this. I have faith that these things are true. And that's where that experience of peace of knowing that you do have peace with God remains true and lord willing when you really get in that position you're in that rest knowing god is for you nobody can put a charge against god's elect and you regardless of the persecution going outside you're outside the camp bearing the reproach and just enjoying christ as your portion which is an unlimited portion that's the god we serve amen so that's that's just pretty much it. I hope this video was a blessing, brothers and sisters. God bless.